Say that, you got a right to let bring that letter in as soon as you can and tell him to go Hurry up. free. How about that letter, Miss Ira? Come in the composing room. That's the least new thing, Matt. Say again. Right. A message for you, Mr. Howard. Yeah. Wow. Ten line. Ten line. Hey, Ted, the boss is calling you. I'm out. I've got that guy's Christmas present all picked out for him. A loud speaker. Ten line. Yeah, didn't you hear me calling you? I heard your broadcasting say you'll bust along one of these days calling me. Come in here. Why don't you just whistle when you want me? Here, yeah, Fido. What do you think of this? Same old form. Now, why can't the telegraph company get a little originality into their stuff? You know, a couple of chorus girls up here in the corner, or... Cut out the chatter and read it. Oh, you want me to read it to you? You should have gone to school. GZ, New York, New York, September 10th, 1923. Free page. Well, that's something. Go on, go on. George Howard can offer you city editorship, New York Gazette, wire when you can leave. What do you think of me now? Local boy gets break. I say. Horatia Alger, please write. This has been a long time coming. It's the big chance. Honest, George, I'm tickled at death. I knew you would be. When do we leave? We? Oui. Here, where are you going? Home and pack. I don't want to miss that train. Your train may not pull out for a couple of years yet. No kidding, George. You're going to take me with you, aren't you? Can't take you just yet. You know how I love this burg. How I wanted my chance at the big town. Three long years I've worked. I know. We've stuck it out together, all right. I'll send for you as soon as I'm set. I'll go with you now. Just on the prospect of a job. And have me support you until you connect? Uh-uh. It wouldn't be the first time. I got a memory. And besides, George, I hate to see you go alone. You know, tall buildings, city slickers, follies, girls. Mm, I'll get by, all right. Don't be so sure. You've been here in the country so long, you're practically a heck. And you're a man about town, I suppose. You wait till I get there. I'll show you something. Boy, hit and run action, Walnut and Pearl Street. Cover it. No fooling, George. You, you really need me back there. You know the old saying? Which one? You can take a hick out of the country, but you can never get the country out of a hick. You need me. I tell you what you do. You stick around here until I find out how the land lies, and then I'll send for you the first possible moment. Now get out and cover that story. Listen, George. When they sent Damon to the big town, did he leave Pythias behind? Will you get out and cover that story? Do I get taxi fare? You do not. Cry your way over there. Maybe you can make a sob story out of it. Get out of here. Hey, haven't you gone yet? Gone? I'm back already. You know, Max, when I get to be editor of this paper, you're the first guy I'm going to fire. Yeah, when you get to be editor. Taxi. Hey, taxi. Never mind. I don't want it. Hey, Marty! Hey! You know it, Ted? It's my kid sister. Oh. There, there, honey. You're all right. You're all right. I'll take it. Take yeah. it easy, Mac. Easy. Give me a look out, fellas. Look out, will you? That's too bad. Can I help you? No. I how bad I Somebody get her broke? Oh, she'll be all right again. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Tell me the truth. We're doing all we can for her. You mean she'll be a... I'm afraid she'll never walk again. Don't say that. You've got to do something. It's not right. She's only a child. You've got to do something. We'll do everything, but... Isn't there somebody? In New York, maybe. Can we send her somewhere? There must be somebody. There's one chance in a million. Dr. Mueller in Germany. You think he could fix her up? If anybody could. He's the greatest in the world. 
But of course, that means money. Money? I'll get the money. I'll get it somehow. When I think of that little kid. I'll get it. It's one chance in a million. There's Dr. Mueller in Germany. Gee, that's tough. But don't you see? He's the one man in the world that could make a war. Couldn't you possibly let I'm me have sorry, it? I'm sorry, Ted. You know, you can have anything I've got. $5,000 is a lot of money. Can't you raise it some way? I might be able to raise 500 if that would help. You know, I'd do anything in the world for you, kid. I know you would, George. That's not enough. You wouldn't get me to first base. Thanks, that's the thing. I'll get it some way. Don't you see? I've got to send her to Germany. It's the only chance she has. And try old man Martin at the Security National Bank? I've tried all the banks. They all want collateral. Let's see. Let's see, how about Howard? I've tried him. I've tried every friend I've got. They can't help me. You've got to let me have $5,000. I'd let you have it if I could, old man. You know me. Yeah, I haven't got it. This, this job doesn't pay much. Now, I laid out plenty in my campaign fund. See, I, I could let you have six or 700 if that'll help. Thanks, Harry. Isn't enough. I need 5,000. I've got to get it. Somehow. Somewhere. Don't you worry, sweet. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Daddy. What, honey? I'm tired of staying in bed. How soon can I get up? Pretty soon. It won't be long. In a couple of weeks, you'll be up and around. You'll never know anything happened. Isn't that right, Doctor? Oh, sure, sure. Just a matter of time. That's all. You see, what did I tell you? Now, you'll be a good girl and don't worry. God bless you. God bless you, too. You'll take good care of her, won't you? Surely. Where's Rick? Rings? I want to see him. Hey, take leg. You want to see Riggs, huh? Yeah. Well, how do you know he wants to see you? He'll see me all right. Well, yeah, well, come on. Chief. Come on in. You've got a lot of nerve coming to see me, punk. I need a lot of nerve the spot I'm in. What do you want? I want to ask you a favor, Rick. <laughs> favor? A fat chance you've got to get a favor out of me. I know it, but I'm going to take that chance. I need $5,000. Yeah, so do a couple of million other people I know. But $5,000? Well, ain't that funny? You put me on the pan on this yellow sheet of yours, then you come to me and ask me for five grand. Are you crazy? Maybe I am. But I gotta have that money. Look, Riggs, that's not for me, it's for her. I've gotta send her to Germany, to Dr. Mueller. I'm all she's got in the world. What am I supposed to do, bust out crying? What do you come to me for? You're the only one I know has that much money. I've tried every friend I've got. I ain't no friend of yours. But you know me. You know I'm good for it. I'll pay you back. I I'll give you a note for it. I uh, know. <laughs> you don't make five grand in a year. Go on, get out of here. I'm busy. Riggs, I've got to have that dough. I've got to. Go on, beat it. Briggs, you're about to go on trial for a killing. And the district attorney's going to hang it on you if he can. Isn't that right? He ain't going to hang nothing on me. He might. But if you had something on him, he'd have to soft pedal the case, wouldn't he? Well, it's always good to have something on the district attorney. I've got something on him. It ought to be worth $5,000 to you, Riggs. You're a pal of his, ain't you? Or like that. I can tell you plenty about him. Why, you dirty, double-crossing little heel. 
You rat on your best friend, would you? If there's anything I hate in this world, it's a squealer. Now listen, brother. I've needed money just as bad as you do. But I never squealed on a pal in my life. Remember that, kid. And as for the district attorney, I've got him right in my vest pocket. I don't need your help. Guess I'm a little bit crazy myself. Here's your five grand. Thanks, Riggs. I'll pay you back. Ah, forget it. Forget it? I'll never forget it. Show. It was awful. Oh, rehearsal went better, right? Did you have a rehearsal? So you think you've got a find here, huh? Go yeah, on. Well, Tell him what we did to Jacksonville, Lloyd. We have planted that big blue gun in the first round. Did we? Did we? Great, huh? Oh, sure. Marvelous. Colossal. Oh, better than that. What? He wouldn't give you a picture of her. You're a photographer, ain't you? Take one. Take one. Even hospital tells me this guy's still breathing. Well, he'll be dead by the time the paper comes out, won't he? Beat it. I tell you, it'll make a great contest. The prettiest eyes contest, eh? We've had the prettiest eyes, the prettiest neck, the prettiest back, the prettiest ankles, the prettiest knees. Heck, we can't go any further. Pretty dead. Well, okay, I'll send him in. Uh, Rickman. Kill it, Ed. What? The president's proclamation? Kill it, kill it. We've got to make room for the Robinson divorce. All right, Billy, I'll give you a break. Don't worry. Great. Come in. Hello. Hello, honey. Hello, Gloria. Hello. Well, what can the big brother do for the little sister today? You remember I told you we have a club at school? Uh-huh. Well, we girls want to go to the Equity Ball next Saturday. I told them you could get us the tickets. Well, how many tickets do you want? Only 14. 14? Holy smoke, you must think I'd pay the theater guild off. But you will get them. It's going to be such a wonderful party. You like to dance? I love it. Sure, I'll get them. I have to rob the box office. That's right. Run along now, honey. It's all set. We'll get you some tickets for the opening of the baseball season. Will 100 be enough? I think so. Oh. Hi, Rex. Hey, Taylor, get some dirt for you. Nice, clean dirt. Well, hardly. Wash it up and I'll buy it. Steal in it. Look, kid. Ah, the girl's clever. She knows where master's footsteps. Thanks for that one. I'm making a collection. Well, don't rub it off. I'm not. I'm rubbing it in. Say, you're looking particularly attractive this morning. Maybe morning to you, but I just got back from lunch. I don't understand how you managed to get up so early in the morning. Ever try going to bed at a respectable hour? Is there such a thing nowadays? Oh, you know what I mean. Before midnight. Midnight? Nothing ever starts in this town till after midnight. Oh, you're hopeless. News, sweet one, news. All the news is unfit to print. And you're getting the reputation for dishing more dirt than any columnist in New York. And I'm such a clean young man. Well, anyhow, lots of people like to read it. I read it myself. Do you? Mm-hmm. Have to watch my step. <laughs> Gather any news last night? No, nothing exciting. New nightclub opening. Were you true to me? Certainly not. I dated three hula dancers up and eight chorus girls. <laughs> you probably did it that. Jealous? Maybe. A little. Great. Gives me a slant in how I stand. Ted, you make love just about the way you write. I know. Breezy and snappy and to the point. Not a bit romantic. Oh, you want romance. OK, baby. There we go. <clears throat> Ready? <clears throat> Will little Lotus Blossom no marry big strong Charlie Young? Charlie Young him crazy nuts to marry little Lotus Blossom. Little Lotus Blossom no like Charlie Young to kid her. Maybe Charlie Young him no kidding. 
Baby Chow Young, him heart so full, real love. No can talk like lovers in storybook. Hmm. Got a new brand. Mm -hmm, I just Don't tell it. me. I know it's, uh, it's, uh, Gurlain. Wrong. Got to have another sample. Um, Roger Galley. Wrong again. Oh, I'm all out of practice. Come here. Ted, not here. Oh, the blindfold test. One more guess. Drake. What is this, a newspaper office or a park bench? Supposing someone else had come in here. You mean someone important? Sue was a good secretary when you came to town. She's still good, in spite of my best efforts. Sue, tell Martin I want to see him get me a copy of yesterday's final. Yes, sir. You're supposed to do a little work around here, too. I do, as little as possible. Got to get something hot in that car of yours. How'd you like yesterday? Putrid. That's what they send town. Too tame. Can't you get some scandal? Oh, you want scandal? Yeah. You got too much lip rouge on. Butter. Bye, Sue. Bye, honey. Where to now? To that fountain of symbol, of folly. <laughs> something very, very nice for you. What? I'll run a picture of you in the paper. Oh, they always run my pictures. But I'll run one with your clothes on. Oh. Whose car is that? That old thing? Mine. I got it. Broadway arithmetic. Sit exactly. Held up to ridicule. I'll say I have. We will bring suit immediately. Unless, uh, Unless what? Unless you have a suggestion to offer. I have a splendid suggestion to yes? offer. Yes? Mr. Howard. Nevertheless, that's my suggestion. Very well. We will file suit at once. I say we will. We will go to my office immediately and drop the papers. Go ahead, sue your head off. You got a thin dime and you know it. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Unless I've been misinformed. Come on, Miss Parker. Don't waste any time. Him. Goodbye, Mr. Howard, till we meet in court. Yes. Oh, the idea! 
No, that's not the idea. Here, try this door. Goodbye, Miss Parker. I hope we haven't upset your equanimity. Like what? Never mind, let it lay. Mm -hmm. uh, don't pay any attention to him. Love and kisses. <laughs> Ted been around? Haven't seen him. Thought not. Your hair's not mussed up. Sign him for me, will you? Yes, Miss Howard. Anywhere? Try the police station. Matilda? Yeah? Hello, Matilda. Get this. My boy. <laughs> well, what Tom nice needs is a good swift kick in the pants. I was just looking for Ted. Have you seen him? No. Do you need any advice? Always. Keep away from newspaper men. They got too many alibis. <laughs> My dear brother. Now you want to talk, eh? Go ahead, hit me. Yeah, go on, hit me. You like it, eh? Hit me again. How's that? I got enough. Hit me. That's enough. Pay 21. Pay me, sweetheart. You lucky dog. That's enough luck. It's clean living. Ted Howard wants you. Good. Time perfectly. So, cash him for me. Hey, you're not going to quit, are you? Let him quit. He's too lucky. Thanks kindly, one and all. <laughs> oh, come on. Deal him up. Come on, come on. Pay off. Pay off. Yeah, that's all right. Put it through. Thank you. Morning, Chief. What's on your mind? Listen, Egg. At Ginsburg and Vivian Parker were here. Yeah, that's all right. She won't sue. She won't, Egg. You said that on the Hilton case. Set us back 10,000. And boosted your circulation 15,000. Well, we won't take any chances on this dame. Sue, type a general release for Vivian Parker. Yes, Mr. Come Chief. here, you. You've got to square this thing, understand? Hey, how do you mean square? You know what I mean. Hand this girl a line. Get her plastered if you have to, but you've got to get me a full release. I don't know, George. I don't want to go up there with a dame like that. What's the matter with you? Are you afraid? Getting a swelled head or something? Oh, you're a columnist now, and it's not in your contract. Well, I'm asking you to do me a favor. Now, you okay, put Okay, George. Don't fly off the handle. I'll square it. Well, that's better. That release ready? Here you are. Lady, lady. There's a problem in mathematics. What? How do you square a pair of round heels? You, you know, I'll get hell Columbus for taking you up to the apartment out announcing you on the telephone. That's all right. I know she'll be very glad to see me. Yeah, I guess you're right. I didn't do Caesar for a walk just like you told me, Miss Parker. Thanks. Well. Hey, I come in? You are in, aren't you? Oh, so I am. Thank you very much for telling me. Anything else? No, thanks. Good night. I like your apartment. I like your nerve. What do you want here? Believe it or not, I'm collecting autographs. I don't know what you're talking about. I have here a charming little legal document known as a general release. And I'm supposed to sign on the dotted line. That's the idea. Are you drunk? Not yet, but the evening's young. I'm suing that nasty little newspaper of yours for a half a million dollars. Nice round little sum, isn't it? Of course, you know you haven't the ghost of a chance to collect a nickel, don't you? And why do you want me to sign the release? Just a formality, Ducky. I hate formality. Don't we all? Step into my office. <laughs> uh, speaking of sugar daddies, we weren't, of course, but let's, shall we? How's your little affair coming along with Mr. E.T. Vaughan? Vaughan? What do you know about that? Plenty, sweetheart. What do you know about that? It's like this, honey. If you want to keep him out of the papers, you've got to play ball with us and sign on the dotted line. I wouldn't sign anything unless my attorney approved. You're making a big mistake, honey. The Gazette can do more for you than that ambulance chaser. And if you're the smart little girl that I think you are, you will sign this. Is it this boogie-boo man trying to scare the little bitty girl? You're trying to blackmail me? The boogie-boo man wouldn't stoop that low. I'm just trying to tell you that you can't get away with it. Get out of my apartment. Get out! Now, Vivian, don't be a little fool here. Do you hear me? Get out of here. All right, all right, I'm going. Don't get excited. But I'll just leave this here and you can sleep on it. Get out of here! Yes, 
Yes, that's all right, Houston. Worthy of a full page. Can't we work in a cut of the girl here somewhere? Oh, yes, sir. You well, I'll put in some of the fancy things up here and do that. Good morning, boys. Uh, oh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Let's come in yet? Not yet, sir. Get him on the phone right away. Skyler, one, two, eight, four, three. Haven't you got him yet? They're still ringing, Mr. Howard. Hello? Hello, honey. I'll put the girl on. Listen, Ted. Were you in the Parker girl's apartment last night? You certainly didn't, you? Hold on to the bed, then. Ready? Vivian Parker was found in her apartment this morning, murdered. Yeah, with your sense of humor, you should never have left Bradford. Oh, you think I'm kidding, eh? Will you drag that carcass of yours out of that bed and meet me at the Parker apartment pronto? Right, hurry. Watch where you're going with me. Bring a book. Uh, Watch to keep on that uh, Parker case. I'm going over to her apartment now. They have something interesting. Come on, Phil. All right. What do you think, Doc? Well, the marks on the throat seem to indicate that death was caused by strangulation. Mm -hmm. When did it happen? Rigor mortis just setting in. In this temperature, it would be about eight hours. I should say that it happened between one and two o'clock this morning. Here, here, young woman, stop that crying. Go in the next room. Wait till I call you. Yes. Answer that, sir. Hello. Just a moment. Chief, yeah. this attorney's office. All right. You know as much about it as we do. Were you seen there last night? I guess so. I didn't sneak up. Well, what happened? Well, she was too cagey to sign. Got so on. Anybody else there? Any telephone call? Oh, uh, she was getting ready to go to bed. Hey, Ted, you didn't buy any chance off, did you? Oh, boy, what a story that is. Oh, please don't joke about things like that. It's too horrible. Don't no worry, honey. It's all in a day's work. Oh, but, Ted, if you were seen there, they may accuse you. No such luck. Too good to be true. Well, how can you talk that way? Jack. Uh, 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 yes, uh, 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 Tell him I want to see him, will you? Hey, Chief. No, I'm sorry. Oh, you can't get in there. Why not? It's conscientious objection. Try to get in there. Hey, buddy, how's chances? Oh, one little look. Not a chance for one. What are you doing? Well, say, I told you what. Yes, the doctor just left. Yes, sir, he said about 2 o'clock this morning. Shut up, will you? Yes, sir, and I'm sending you a copy of the report. Uh, no sign of robbery. A lot of jewelry here and over $200 in cash. Very good, sir. All right. Boy, come here. Yeah, yeah. What time did Miss Parker come home last night? She come in about one o'clock. I took up in the elevator. Then what? Then she gave me this here dog to take out for a walk, like she always do. He, he's a swell dog. He won full Never car. mind that. What did you do next? So then we walked past the lamppost on the corner. You and Miss Parker? No, sir. Me and the dog. Oh. Uh, then what did you do? Then we went over by the avenue, that other lamppost. You know the one over there? Hey, what are you talking about? Well, you know how dogs is. Some's one poster, some's two. This young one's a four poster. Never mind the dog. Well, it's getting kind of heavy, mister. Just what I'll do with it. Anything you like, put him down. Uh-oh. When you brought the dog back, did she say anything? Sir? Did she say anything? It's a him, not a her. Not the dog, you fool. Miss Parker. Oh, you mean Miss Parker? Yes. What did she say? She said, thanks. Is that all she said? That's all she said to me. She was kind of busy talking to that gentleman. There was a man up here? Y yes, sir. How did he get up here? Well, he came in when I brought the dough. Said he'd give me five dollars if I'd take him up to her apartment without announcing him on the telephone. And what did you do? Mister, I said he'd give me five dollars. So you brought him up here, eh? Well, I had to bring the dog up here anyhow, naturally. Uh, when you and the man came upstairs, did Miss Parker let you in? Yes, sir. And what did you do? I just pushed him right in the arms and... You pushed the man into her arms? No, sir. The dog. 
Oh. Here's the release of something, Chief. Uh-huh. The Gazette, eh? Hey, yes. where are you going? I just go take see the for a walk. Oh, come on, sit down. I ain't half through with you yet. Yeah, yeah. Sit down over there. Yeah. Now, what time was it you let the man in? A little after one o'clock, sir. How do you know for sure? Well, I just took Mr. McBride to his apartment and I looked up at the clock. Mm-hmm. When you left here, what did you do? I, I listened to her door there for a Yeah, minute. and what did you hear? Well, they'd been fussing. And she was yelling for him to get out. Was Miss Parker screaming? No, she just yelled for him to beat it. Mm -hmm. And did the man go? Well, uh, I left him yelling when I went on downstairs. Well, why didn't you wait and hear what happened? Well, there ain't nothing unusual for a lady to tell a gentleman friend to get out of her apartment. Not this house, it ain't. No, sir. Now, this man, could you identify him? Could I do what, sir? Identify him, identify him. I, I don't know what you mean, sir. What did he look like? Oh, he was tall. Not, not very. Kind of nice looking. Had a hat on and everything. Did Miss uh, Parker know him? Seemed to. He walked right on in. Now, see here, boy. I want an accurate description of that man. I must have it. But I just told you they was medium tall. Mustache? Scars? Anything like that? I ain't seen none. How old was he? You know, I never asked him how old he was. Ah. Uh, I'd give my right eye to know that man's name. Say, you mean the man I let in? Of course. Oh, his name is Ted Lloyd of the Daily Gazette. Ted Lloyd of the Gazette? Yes, sir. Why in the dickens didn't you say so before? Well, you ain't never asked me the man's name. You so busy demonstrating that man. Oh, shut up. Get Ted Lloyd in here right away. All right, Chief. He's right outside with those reporters in the hallway. That's a break. Here's a fountain pen with a point busted. Looks like it's been thrown over there. Well, Ted Lloyd. Right here. Kirby wants to see you. Great. Oh, fine. Well, that's all right. Uh, just a minute. Oh, I didn't yeah, ask for you. You've got to have me. That's... Hey, well, look. That's not me. Hello, Commissioner. Why are you giving the Gazette the first? Now we're getting someplace. Sure. Morning, Kirby. Well, Lloyd, put down everything they say. Well? I've always said that you were too smart for one man. I guess your foot kind of slipped at last. You think so? Yes. You were up here at 1.30 this morning. You don't deny that, do you? Once a flat foot, always a flat foot. Deny it, I'm up here to tell you about it. Mm. Is that your fountain pen? Yes. Oh, no, no, you don't. Exhibit A. Do you recognize this? Not when you wave it around like a flag. Sure, that's the release. You said it. Exhibit B. She was going to sue us for some dirt that Lloyd had in his column. Mm, now we're getting at it. And I told Lloyd that if he didn't get that release, he was through. Hey, George, what are you trying to do to me? Get me all tangled up in this? You're mixed up into it now, up to your neck. Now, remember, anything you say will be used as evidence against you. Look here, Kirby. You're not going to charge Ted with it. No one else but. Why, it's as plain as day. The girl was going to sue the paper. You came up here to get a statement. You had a fight with her, and when she wouldn't sign the release, you bumped her off. You got it all worked out, haven't you? You bet your sweet life I am. Lloyd, you're under arrest. Great. Where's the phone? Well, of all the dumb... Oh, Ted! You're crazy if you think you can hang this on me. Yeah. Shut up, Lloyd. Don't talk at all. This is the best break we've had yet. Boy, what a yarn. Come on, Lloyd. Let's get going. We'll take a look at headquarters through some iron bars. Oh, Ted, Bill. You can't take him. He didn't do it. I know he didn't. Mm. Don't worry, sweet. Doesn't mean a thing. We've got to let Kirby get this out of his system. They can't hold me. Oh, uh, Martin? Hold on. He's right, Sue. I'll have him out in a couple of hours. All right, Houdini. Come on, Lloyd. Hello, Martin. This is Howard. Listen. Tear out the front page and hold the passage. We're going to stand this town on its ear. Yeah, pretty good story. Well, what do we do next? I know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to plaster that front page with pictures of Parker's sweetheart, Mr. E.T. Vaughn. Oh, no, you're not, George. I promised to keep him out of the papers. Why? Well, I'm working on the theory that robbery was the motive for the Parker killing. Nonsense. Well, the police found a lot of jewelry and $200 in cash. Yeah, the old army game. Some guy's smart enough to take a few things that would never be missed. What's Vaughn going to do with it? Why are you trying to cover him up? He's my ace in the hole. He gave me a list of the jewelry he gave this Parker girl that the police have never found. I'm on my way over to Furman's now to see if I can't run it down. And if you do run it down, what then? Well, 
If I can't find a guy who wants to fence it, he must be the guy who stole it. And if he's the guy who stole it, he must be the one who killed the girl. Simple? Marvelous, Sherlock. George, you should never have left Bradford. Huh? You know what I always told you? You can take the hick out of the country, but you can never get the country out of the hick. Over the river. I'll go jump in it. Yes, but this is a little out of my line, Lloyd. It wasn't out of your line in the Hanover affair. Or the Melrose case. Ah, oh, that was different. I'm in a spot, Furman. If I can't trace this stuff, things are going to look pretty tough for me. Well, now if you can keep it covered up. I promise you nobody will get hurt. Oh, all right. If Vaughn can trust me, you can. Here. Yeah. You go and see this man. And tell him I sent you. Mint. Is that Sully Mintz? Yeah, he handles a lot of little pieces like you're looking for. Thanks, Furman. Well, goodbye, kid. Good luck. Yes, sir, he told me to come right straight to you. You know, so, you're a pretty popular guy. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> so, uh, Furman put in a big plug for me, eh? Did he? Say, he said you could find a needle in a haystack. Uh, yes, <laughs> he did. Oh, he's crazy about you. Really? Well, he's not a bad guy himself. I'll say he's not. He's certainly gone to the bat for me, and he said you'd be tickled to death to help me out. Give me a couple of hours, and I'll sound out the boys. Where's that list? Easy. That's great, Saul. I'll run along, and I'll be back in a couple of hours. Why don't you have lunch with me? All right. Where will I meet you? At the round table. Oh, great. I'll be there, so. Say, okay. you're a great guy. <laughs> you're marvelous. <laughs> uh, Flushing, 784277. Seven. Hello, Pasquale? Mint. Hey, listen, Tony. I've got a very important job for a pal of mine I want you to come down and do. Well, any development? Well, what? Come on, come on, let's have it. Don't talk to me with my mouth full. Full? About a half an hour after you left, I got reason to in with the stuff. Who was it? I don't know. Some guy from out of town. I did what you said. Stall them. Are you sure it was the right stuff? Certainly. I ain't no amateur. Well? Well, I told him to come back later. Now, get this. Here's what I fix. You're a private buyer, see? By the name of McCarty. See, McCarty. McCarty. And when he comes back, I'll tell him to go see you. I'll send him up to your place. See? Well, Sully, thanks. Okay, kiddo. Oh. When's he coming back? Tonight. I'll set him up to your place. He phoned it. All right, Sully. Thanks. Does this guy McCarty know the stuff's hot? Sure, he's wise. I'll tell him you're on your way up. Uh, Skyla, one, two, eight, four, three. Hello. Oh, McCarty? Yes, this is Mac. Uh, this man, uh, Lewis, is here. Yeah, with that stuff. Uh-huh. All right, I'll send them right up. Yeah, goodbye. Just for you to come right up.
Who is it? McCarty was here? Yeah. Come in. I'm McCarty. I'm Lewis. Mintz tells me you have some stuff you want to unload. Yeah, I got a few little trinkets. Got it with you? Yeah. Rick. McCarty, huh? Yeah. What is this, a trap? It started out to be. Anybody else in on this? No. Cops know? I'm alone in this. I'm arrested for killing that Parker girl. You ought to know that, Riggs. I had to try to clear myself. How would I ever dream I'm that... Excuse me, Coco. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know there was anyone here. Honey, this is Mr. Riggs from Bradford. You remember. Oh, yes. How do you do, Mr. Riggs? How do you do? I'll go get another Never cup. Never mind, honey. You run along the bed like a good girl. All right. Good night, Mrs. Riggs. Good night. Good night, honey. Good night. That's my kid sister. Yeah. Walks pretty good, don't she? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't forgotten. Wait a minute. Keep away from that phone. I said I haven't forgotten, Riggs. I'll kill that story. If you and your Gazette had to kill those stories a week ago, I might have been able to get rid of that. The Parker jewels? Yeah. Why did you do it, Riggs? Ah, she was a little tramp. She had it coming to her. Oh, you knew her before then? Sure. I gave the dame her start. Stayed her to come to New York. And when I blow in there flat, she turns me down cold. Wouldn't give me a dime. Yeah, she had it coming to her all right. So I let her have it. You gotta give me a break, Lloyd. Years ago I helped you, now you gotta help me. I need some dough. You'll get it as soon as the bank's open in the morning. Where do you live? 1614 10th Avenue, Hotel Gordon. Lewis. Well, you go Name? there and lie low. I'll bring it to you first thing in the morning. You wouldn't double cross me, would you, kid? All right, I'll be waiting. be a telephone call. Now, don't you worry, dear. We'll find him all right. You may find time to walk out on me, out on bail, and his whole story cockeyed up in the air. I found him, Chief. He's over at Tony. Tell him to grab a taxi and come right over. Yeah, but he don't want to come. Well, he's got a bun on like nobody's business. You tell him I wanted him? Sure. What'd he say? Well, I'm afraid I can't tell you. There's a lady present. But he said plenty. I'll get him over here. Did he give you any message for me? He said for you not to worry, Sue. Hey, boss, I'll go with you. You will not. You come along, Sue. You might help. Come on. Leave me alone, will you? I'm all washed up. Have you gone crazy? Ted, won't you please tell us why There's you... There's nothing to tell. The story's all washed up. Good Get it. grief, man. Pull yourself together. You can't do this to me. You've got to tell me. Oh, George, there's no use. You wouldn't understand. 
story's cold. You young fool, you're digging your own grave. You're putting a noose around your neck. What do you mean the story's all cold? You were on the right trail, weren't you? No, no. Oh, Ted, what's gotten into you? What happened? You've got to tell. Something must have happened. Nothing happened. I was all wet, that's all. We've got to put something in the paper. Oh, forget the papers. Leave me alone, will you? Both of you. Who's back of all this, Ted? What do you mean? Just exactly what I say. You're under suspicion yourself. You get all steamed up over a sure clue, and then you drop it like a hot brick. Now, who are you covering up? Oh, Ted, you must be covering someone. Who is it? Let me alone, will you? You're both crazy. Ted, you owe yourself a duty. To me, to Sue here, and to the paper. Now, I'm not going to let you make a fool of yourself. You're going to tell me exactly what's happened, or else. Or else what? Or else I'll break your oh, contact. Please, Mr. Howard, let me handle him. Oh. Don't you understand, dear? We're all trying to help you. Something's happened, something awful. You've got to tell us. If you won't do it for Mr. Howard or for your paper or for me, Ted, do it for Gloria. You must think of her. I am thinking of her. So. It's no use, we can't do anything with him. I'll see what I can find out from Gloria. Ted, what is it, honey? You can tell me. Oh, nothing. Nothing. I can't tell anybody. Well, if you love me, you can. Oh, Sue. I do, I do. Oh, please, sweetheart. What time is it? Quarter of ten. Why? Oh, nothing. Well, well where are you going, Ted? Well, huh? Oh, I just remembered I got a date. Well, well, listen, can I go with you? No, no, you, I'll be back in 15 minutes. You, you just wait right here. Will you, Sue? All Honest, right. I'll be back. Polly, take care of the young lady, will you? I'll be right back. Skyler, one, two, eight, four, three. Yeah, what'd he say? Come on, dear, what'd he say? Oh, answer that phone. Hello? It's for you. Oh, thanks. Hello? Mr. Howard, this is Sue. Ted just left. He said he had an appointment. He, no, he wouldn't let me go with him. But I think he was going to meet somebody. Did he say who where? Wait a minute. Did Ted have an appointment with this man this morning? I don't know. I couldn't hear very well. But Ted did say something about as soon as the bank opens this morning. Oh, he did? Mm. Oh, Sue, you wait there until you hear from me. A spring, 3100. Does Ted still bank at the uh, Union National? Yes, I think so. Uh, uh, Kirby, it's George Howard of the Gazette. I got a hot tip for you. If you play ball with me, I think I can lead you to the slayer of Vivian Parker. Meet me across the street from the Union National Bank in 10 minutes. Right? He cashed a check, all right. How big? I couldn't see, but he asked for it in 10s and 20s. Maybe you're right about this thing after all. Of course I'm right. He'll lead us right to the man we want. That's his cab there. Hey, Dick, when he comes out, follow that cab and don't lose it. How did you manage to figure this out, Howard? Couldn't have done it, but for one thing. What's that? See, I never was on the police force. Yeah? Hmm. Room 18, up them stairs on your left. Who's there? Lloyd. 
Anybody with you? No. Come on in. You got the dough? Yeah. Hey, uh. Why did that young fellow go that just came in here? What young fellow? Don't pull that stuff. Where'd he go? Room 18, up them stairs and to the left. Do you stop Kirby? Go no, keep your eye on that guy. That's a venue, 67400. Say, what's going on around here? You'll find out soon enough. Uh, give me Martin. If you know what's good for you, you'll keep your mouth shut. Hello, Martin. Hold everything. I think we'll get the payoff on the Parker story. Now, give me Brown. I'll give it to him. That's great. That's all I can do for you. It's OK, kid. That makes us even. How about you? Can you beat the rap? I don't know. I'm in a tough spot. No alibi or nothing, huh? You were my only out. The trap, you dirty double crosser! Briggs, I swear! Why is going, Lloyd? Jewelry, exhibit A. You rat, you squeal! I didn't squeal, Briggs. Honest, I didn't. Well, come on, let's get going. Come on, take him on there. Take him on there. <laughs> I'll get you, Lloyd. If it's the last thing I ever do. Thank you. Come on now. Hey, Piper, I'm a Riggs murder All about it. Read all about it. Hey, Piper. Read all about it, Piper. Piper. Your Honor, it appears that I have to be gentlemen, gentlemen, every prepared plot. Try to be gentlemen. Honor, <laughs> uh, I should like to recall Eustace Brown. Brown, sir. Take the stand. Now then, Eustace, you previously established a fire escape outside Miss Parker's window, didn't you? What do you say, sir? You previously established a fire escape outside Miss Parker's window. No, sir, I, I didn't do that. But you said there was one there. Oh, yes, but I, I didn't establish it. It was there when I took the job. Oh, I see. <laughs> it was uh, there when you took the job. Yeah. Well, now, Eustace, in your previous testimony, you said that a man could step from the fire escape onto the window and into Miss Parker's room, didn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Yes, and it was only a distance of three feet, wasn't it? Y yes, sir, yes. yes. That's all, Eustace. Yes. Just a minute, Eustace. You say it is possible for a man the size of Mr. Riggs to step from the fire escape to the window sill. Well, he is a pretty big man. Exactly. Stand up, Mr. Riggs. Yes. Wouldn't it be extremely difficult for a man as big as he to make that step a distance of three feet? Yeah, he is a pretty big man. Could he do it? Well, he might, then again, he might. Answer me yes or no. Well, I don't know where he could or he couldn't. Answer my question, yes or no. Well, I beg pardon, sir, but there's some question you can't answer yes or no. There is no question that can't be answered yes or no. Big pardon, I, I know some questions you can't just answer yes or no. You do? Yes, sir. Then ask me one. Well, big pardon, Judge Your Honor, is it all right for me to... Yes? All right, all right, go ahead. Well, beg your pardon. But has y'all left off in your wife yet? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no wife. <laughs> you ain't got no wife. Call Mr. Ted Lloyd in rebuttal. Ted Lloyd to the stand. Now then, Mr. Lloyd, you previously testified that on the night of April the 6th last, you received a visitor in your apartment, namely the defendant. You've seen the copy for your paper when Mr. Riggs came there, weren't you? Yes. That you never turned that copy in? No. Why not? My facts weren't accurate. You weren't by any chance afraid to continue with it, were you? No. Isn't it a fact that a number of years ago, the defendant loaned you a large sum of money enabling you to have an operation performed on your sister so that she wouldn't be a cripple for life? Many people loan me money on Did Mr. Days. Riggs ever loan you $5,000? Answer yes or no. Yes. Hmm. And to show your gratitude to the defendant, you tore up the copy and discontinued the investigation. I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. 
Mr. Lloyd, your sister has testified that on the night Mr. Riggs visited you, he made a direct confession of the murder of Vivian Parker. Is that true? I object, Your Honor. The records speak for themselves. Objection overruled. That will be all. You're a newspaper columnist, aren't you? Yes. You never printed anything but the truth, did you? Not to my knowledge. Isn't it a fact, Mr. Lloyd, that just prior to this murder, Vivian Parker was about to start suit against your newspaper for one half a million dollars? Yes, sir. That was for libel, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Isn't it also a fact that in the last four years, no less than 14 suits for libel have been brought against you? Objection. Objection sustained. Your Honor, I claim the right to question the credibility of this witness. Objection sustained. Proceed, Mr. Harris. Mr. Lloyd, you testified that the defendant was a friend of yours. Yes, sir. He used to be. As a matter of fact, you were under a tremendous obligation to him, were you not? Yes, sir, I was. And at this time, you yourself were charged with the murder of Vivian Parker. I was. And so your idea of gratitude was to divert suspicion from yourself and lead the police in a carefully laid trap to the defendant, Riggs. I know nothing about that. That will do, Mr. Lloyd. Your Honor, the state rest. Court is adjourned until tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Defendant will rise and face the jury. We, the jury, find the defendant, Edward P. Riggs, guilty of murder in the first degree, as charged in the indictment. Boy, we split it over. Riggs. Everybody stay where you are. Don't anybody move. Drop that gun, Riggs. Oh. Hold it. Don't anybody move. But this guy gets at the back. Let that man go, Riggs. You can't get away with that. Don't move. Hey, close that door. Don't let these people in here. Hey, you're 
Any more doors in this room? No, this is the only entrance. You mean what? How about the windows? They're heavily barred. Hmm. Hello, Martin. Hold that front page. Here's what happened. Jury brings in verdict guilty. Riggs holds up entire courtroom at point of gun. How about the gas, Kirby? Yes. You're right. Jack, get some tear bombs. I'll get that guy out of there. Now you don't. Don't turn no tear bombs. You can't hold out for long, Riggs. We'll get you sooner or later. Yeah, but you'll get me my way. There's something I want. What is it? That dirty squealer lawyer. Send him in here. You're crazy. I want that rat. And if he don't come, I'm going to shoot this guy in the back. I know I'm going to get mine. But I got a little present for Lloyd before I go. Send him in here. Tell Jack to hurry up with those bombs. We can't waste any more time with this guy. What are you going to do? I'm going to smoke him out. It's the only thing I can do. And he'll kill that innocent man in there like he did the clerk. He's a killer. I know him. I can't help that. Better send that stool figure where this guy gets it. I'll give you just two minutes. Cover that door. Kick in the door and let him have it, Kirby. Right. Don't do that, Kirby. You'll kill an innocent man. That's the chance we got to take. Don't pull anything, Kirby. I got this guy covered. You better send Lloyd in here. Wait a minute. I'm going in there. Oh, no, please. Do it, please. Walker, give me a gun, I'll go. Oh, no, you don't. Well, I'm the man he wants. I've got to. I can't sanction that, Lloyd. This is a police matter. Well, I've got a police badge, haven't I? Can I go in there as a cop and shoot it out with him? I suppose you can legally, but it's suicide. I'll take that chance. Don't be a fool. You can't go in there. George, I've got to. He'll shoot you down like a rat. Walker, you can't allow that. He can't stop me. Oh, you can't go in. I won't let you. Sue, there's a man in there who's going to die unless I go in. He had nothing to do with this. I did. I started the whole thing. I can't back out now and let an innocent man take what's coming to me, can I? Well, if you won't give yourself, think of Gloria. You're all she has, Ted. Don't worry, honey. Everything's going to be all right, George. You better send Lloyd in here. All right, kid. <laughs> give me that gun. Oh, please don't, Ted. Sue. Oh. Kirby, you got just one minute. Are you going to send him in? I'm coming in there, Riggs. But <laughs> I'm coming in the cop. I'm going to take you out of there. Go right, you stupid. Come on. Get ready with the smoke. Yeah. Trying to make me wait for bullets, eh? Kirby, you dirty double crosser! I'll do it, I'll do it. There's no hurry. All the other newspapers to beat you to it? Oh, that's right. All right. Oh. Martin, there's a story. Ted Lloyd shoots it out with rigs. Well, Ted, how's the patient? Hello, Phil. Swell. Now, don't tell us about your operation. Reading your column, Steve. My column? Yes. And of all the insipid, insane, incompetent. Say, who's been writing it? I have. How do you like it? Putrid. 
Yeah, that's what they all say, the best in town. <laughs> yeah, read today and see how you like it. Well, um, wait a minute. Say, who wrote this? Two. What? Why, I, I never, it's all news to me. Yeah, that's why we publish a paper, so you'll know what's going on. <laughs> you get to town very often, do you? You know, as I've always said, you can hick out of the country, but you can't just get the country out of the hick. Hmm? <laughs> Honest, Ted, I had nothing to do with that. Well, this paper never tells anything but the truth. So, right. remember my incision. <laughs>